Well, we're happy to have you with us here today. It's uh, really a great honor for us to be able to chat, chat with you and, uh, on behalf of our students out there in Utah. Let me just ask you this. I understand that you have a strong connection to Utah. Can you tell us more about your work with our Utah schools? Yeah, actually, I first uh, came to Utah probably a decade ago uh, when Wendover High School was admitted into the NASA Explorer School program. A teacher out there, Carolyn Bushman, had put the application in. And typically, when a school becomes a NASA Explorer School, an astronaut comes to welcome them into the family. And um, it was such a wonderful community of people. And Carolyn's such a great teacher that I stayed in contact with her for the last 10 years. And I go out and visit every two or three years and, and uh, visit with the students and help them sort of dream big. I think that's wonderful. I think it's great that you take that kind of an interest. Of course, we had Jake Garn out there who went into space, and and uh, he's uh, was my partner in the United States Senate, and still talking about his space trip. He said that he said that in his visits around the the state, they could care less about him being a U.S. senator. They they wanted to talk <laughs> about him being an astronaut, <laughs> and he's very proud of that. Yeah, you know, I find that people are really interested in, in the experience that we've had, and, and I think it behooves those of us who've had such a spectacular experience to get out and talk about it as much as we can, and especially with students, because you want them to dream big. You want them to think, wow, I can go do that, or I'm excited about you know, exploring space or just exploring the world. So. Well, I want to thank you. We're really glad that you're out doing stuff like that. This question is from uh, the Beehive Academy in Sandy. Uh, now, Dr. Magnus, we are currently studying geometry such as uh, surface area, volume, and other concepts with formulas. Have you had a great deal of opportunities to use uh, those formulas in your work? And if those formula, if 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 not those formulas, then others? Oh, I use formulas all the time in my work, and you know what's what's great about learning things like the you know the circumference of a circle and the area of a square. All those formulas are actually um, you're learning in math, and math is a language, right? Uh, yes. And so what the, what the language of math is helping you understand is the relationships between different physical phenomena or different parts of the world. So if you know the length of one side of a square, you can figure out the area and the volume, and practically speaking, that you can measure one side of a box and figure out from there what you can put into it. So math is a language that helps you describe relationships, just like English is a language that helps you describe relationships. And so when you're learning math, you start with multiplication and division and addition and subtraction, and that's like the alphabet. And then you graduate into algebra, and that's sort of like a paragraph. And then you graduate into some of these formulas, and those are the stories and the paragraphs that explain how the world works. So you, formulas are very handy because it helps you understand relationships. This is great. I'm really <laughs> happy to hear you talk about this. Now, this question is from uh, Crimson View Elementary in St. George. Our class recently read two passages about uh, how technology has changed over time with the hot air balloon and with movie uh, making. We were wondering what was the most significant change in technology with the space shuttle from your first mission in 2002 to your final shuttle mission in 2011. You know, I have to say it's all about the computers and what computers can do and how computers have been miniaturized and miniaturized and miniaturized. So the shuttle, when it was built, was built with five computers and they're all, you know, a big box is about like this. And, and one phone, one phone today has more computing power than all five of those original shuttle computers. Not amazing. And so every time we'd get to orbit, what we would do was we would set up a network of laptops and we would offload everything but the safety related functions from the shuttle computers onto this network of computers that we would set up, these laptops, because they would function and work and be able to compute a lot more than the original shuttle computers. But those had been certified for safety purposes, so we didn't want to take all the safety critical functions off of it. So we were constantly having to learn how to use all these new computers and these new computing technology. And the students to, of today are going to be in that mode as well, constantly learning because things are changing so fast. And so just like we had to with every shuttle mission, they're you know, students of today, and even those of us who are a little older, you know, we have to be constantly learning because the computing technology and the capabilities are changing so incredibly fast. Well, can these students get access to those type of uh, studies, those type of uh, matters? Uh, as far as the, uh, the way the shuttles evolved? Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's um, a lot of reference material online about the development of the shuttle and how it was engineered and how we operated it. And the, kind of you can kind of look through that material and see how the shuttles were slowly evolving 
over over time. They were very much to the last mission, even though we flew 135 shuttles, very much the last mission. They were still experimental. And we were doing all kinds of aerodynamics experiments at the last mission. We had put uh, GPS in as a navigation uh, system during my course of time at NASA. We had gone to a glass cockpit. There was always some sort of upgrades going on with that vehicle throughout my whole program. Oh, that's great. Well, this question is from Willow Elementary in Grantsville. How did you get to be an astronaut? What was your favorite subject when you were in fifth grade? <laughs> Gosh, in fifth grade, you know, I really, I always liked math and science, but I loved to read as well. And actually, I'll share a secret. I got caught in class. I would put a, a book inside my textbook, and I would read just anything I could. And I usually, I missed a couple tests that way because I was so engrossed in my reading. But I always loved math and science. And I think that's one of the reasons why it led me to be an astronaut, because the idea of being on the edge of what people can do and pushing the boundaries of technology further and, and going into space and seeing our planet and understanding what that looks like, that just caught my imagination. And I wasn't, I had no idea if I could do it. I grew up in a small town in Southern Illinois, but I knew I had to try because that was my dream. And so I would, I would encourage any of the students in Utah, or all of the students in Utah, to find what your dream is and go for it because you can do it. It takes time, it takes hard work, you have to ask for help. People will help you, adults around you will help you. But you totally owe it to yourself when you find that dream to go for it. And so I went and I studied science and then I discovered engineering. I go, wow, this looks like fun. So then I studied engineering. And I got some work experience in the aerospace industry, got my PhD, studied something different that I didn't know existed when I first made my plan in material science. And then I applied to NASA and I, I got to be an astronaut. So. Well, what a message to our students out there in Utah. We're really proud of you. Uh, and the experiences you've had, and, and the way you're explaining this is really, really good. I, I think if somebody had done that uh, in my day and age, I would have paid a little more attention to math, is all I can say. Yeah, and those science. are and those are tools, right? Math, science, reading, everything that the students, everything that they're learning in school are the tools that are going to help them achieve their dreams. And the beautiful thing about it is, as, as they get older, as you go through life, your, your horizons open up, and then you experience new things like oh wow maybe that's something I need to go look into and I'm gonna go study that or I'm gonna go learn about that and the most important thing to remember is find those passions and pursue those passions and don't hesitate on that a lot of people stop themselves you know think oh maybe that's too hard or maybe I'm not good enough and you shouldn't think like that you are good enough and it just takes hard work most of success is hard work well, nice message.